In this tutorial video, we'll show you how you can use uh, some basic features of the HashMap class from Java Library. So before we begin, if you want to see the complete documentation for HashMap, what you can do is open your web browser and go to the search engine, and then type Java API and then HashMap. If you hit the search, uh, simply look through the latest version of the Java, for example, version A. If you go there, and then you can see the complete documentation for HashMap. Okay? And then we're going to go over uh, some of the methods or constructor for the hash map with you in the JUnit test. But if you want to see other methods for complete usages, you should really go to this web page and then see over there for the, uh, for the documentation for the class. And also you can see also the summary for all the available constructors and also the summary of all the available methods. Okay, this is this is really the authoritative guidance for you to consult with if you really get stuck with your application. But we're going to show you the common usages for HashMap back in Eclipse. Okay, let me switch back to Eclipse. So I do have a small uh, JUnit test method to go over with you. At the same time, I'm also going to use an iPad to visualize what uh, how things work at the runtime. Of course, in the Eclipse, I will also use uh, the debugger feature to go execute the code line by line to, to see how we can uh, explore the runtime object structure. Okay, so now before we begin, let's just review very quickly what a map is. Uh, the way you can, uh, one way to understand uh, what a map is intuitively is basically like a two column uh, table, something like this. Basically, you have a table like this and then you have two columns over here. You can, uh, and then the, the left column is called the key and the right column is called the value. And then you can have as many rows as you like. You can have one row over here, two row, three, four, and five, six, as many as you like. So your table can be as large as you might need for your application. So intuitively, a hash map is simply a collection of entries. Okay, and what each entry is contains a key and a value. You can see we've got a key and we have a value. And now it's really important to note, the keys over here for the left column over here are used for search purposes, which means if you want to identify a particular entry in your current map, you, can, you must use a key to search for that particular entry. And since it is going to be used for search, you, there cannot be any duplicates for the key. Otherwise, given the same key value, it might identify more than one entries, more than one entries in the map. So you got ambiguity over there. Okay. So now keys must be unique. Okay. So these are the critical points about the map before uh, we go over the code. Make sure you understand that, or you can review your lecture notes or background material before you go on. Okay. Let's go back to our code over here. So what I will do is I will put a breakpoint at the first line for the test hash map JUnit test method. Okay. Uh, before I execute the code, let me just go over some syntax with you over here. You can see we uh, it is an assignment over here. On the right hand side, we have a new keyword, which means we are trying to assign the address of some new objects to some variable. And here we declare a variable called grades over here. And then the type of the variable is called hash map over here, hash map. And let's try to understand what's uh, the syntax over here very quickly. Okay, let's go to iPad over here. So let me just repeat whatever declaration it is over here. So we have hash map. So this is the type of the variable you're trying to declare. And every collection class in Java is generic, which means you can choose what type of elements or key or value you would like to store in the collection. Okay. So this is the syntax. It has to be an angle bracket to start with. Okay. It must close this element type by a right angle bracket, so it's a matching pair. Okay, in the case of the hash map, you have to separate the type for the key. So this is the type for the key, and the second type you're gonna pass is the type for the value. Okay, one for key and the other one for value. Okay, in our case, for illustration, we simply say the key is simply a string. Let's say per uh, student's name, and also the value is going to be uh, some double value. I'll explain why it has to be capitalized in just a moment. The value, let's say grade point, let's say A plus correspond to 9.0. And then A, uh, uh, let's say uh, B plus uh, uh, corresponds to 7.5. Okay, it's a double value. Okay, so now let me just put it down. So string over here is going to be the key value, which means 
all the first column values over here will be just a string value. Okay, for example, it could be, let's say, Hyang over here. It's a student's name. And then uh, the second one over here, let me use a different color here. So the second one here, let me put double here. Okay, and then it can simply be some double value. Let's say Hyang got A plus, so that'll be 9.0 over here. There's a particular entry in the map. So now, why do we put double here as opposed to just double? Okay, let's review this very quickly. We know that there are two kinds of types in Java. This kind of a lowercase or lowercase type is called primitive type. And then the capitalized type is called reference type. And the critical difference is, whenever you talk about primitive type, you just talk about their value. For example, if you talk about 9.0, it's just the value 9.0. But a reference type over here is like a, uh, especially for double here, is so-called a wrapper class over here. It's a wrapper class for the primitive double value. It's very easy to understand. So if I, the way I create a double over here is to say double, I can say D, is assigned to let's say new double over here and then i can simply pass for example 9.0 this is how i create a new double objects okay so at the runtime it's simply going to be d is pointing to some double objects over here and then it has some value field over here and then it's going to be the value of 9.0 you can see we wrap this particular value called 9.0 inside an object. That's why it's called a wrapper class, okay? So very quick uh, illustration. But in Java, they actually got something very convenient for you. When you are expecting a double type over here, what you can do is you can pass directly a value like a 9.0, even though it's actually just double type, okay? So it's very easy to convert between double and double, okay? For example, 9.0. Okay, you can just use them uh, quite uh, seamlessly, as we'll see uh, in the uh, tutorial video. This is something called boxing and unboxing. So I wouldn't spend too much time on this for this tutorial, but if you're interested, you can simply just go Google and then try to see what boxing and unboxing, what they really mean. Okay, but we'll see lots of instances for boxing and, and unboxing in this uh, tutorial video. Hopefully you will get some feel, okay? Okay, one more thing to say. Okay, so whenever you're trying to specify uh, some element type for Java collection, make sure you always specify a reference type. This is why I'm using capitalized double reference type rather than lowercase double for primitive type, okay? If you simply say, if you simply put double over here as the value type, it's not going to compile. You should always put a reference type. Okay, but of course, if you simply got a type called person or the point, there's no issue. I'm just saying for primitive values, you always put the uh, corresponding wrapper class. Okay, let me just uh, maybe summarize that for you, just in case you have doubts. For int, you can put integer. Okay, for char, you can put character. For bool, you can put boolean. And also, as we have seen, if you have double, you can simply put double. So these are the primitive type, and these are the reference type, okay? Reference type and primitive type, okay? Make sure you understand those, okay? So now let's go back to our, uh, okay, again, so this line, <laughs> what I have done so far is just to illustrate to you how you can understand the syntax, hash map, left angle brackets, right angle brackets, and then you put reference types over here. The first one for the key, and the second one for the value. Okay, just make sure you understand those, okay, before we actually try to illustrate to you how it works at the runtime. What I will do is, okay, I already put a breakpoint at the, uh, the first line of the JUnit test, so what I will do now is I'm going to launch the debugger. So I can simply uh, click on the bug button here, or I can simply right click on this test hash map uh, JUnit class, I can say debug as JUnit test. Okay, once I do that, it's going to switch to the debug perspective, okay? And make sure, let me just delete the previous one, the previous expressions I got, I can say remove all, okay? And then do not ask me again, I can say yes. 
Okay, so now make sure you have these two panels before you continue. You've got something called variables, which will show you all the variables that have been declared so far. And also the expressions for all those variables declared so far, you can try to manipulate their values to see uh, if their return expression value makes sense. Okay, so these two uh, panels are very, very useful for debugging purpose. So if you haven't, if you, if you cannot see these two panels in your Eclipse, what you can do is you can go to window and show view, and then you should be able to see expressions and variables. Just click on them, it's going to be brought uh, to your Eclipse. If you cannot see those two in this drop down menu, you can just go to other and then you can search for them. Okay, either way. Okay, so now at the moment, we don't see anything in variables simply because we don't, we have, we are only pausing at the beginning of this line. So that means we haven't created this grades hash map just yet. So what we'll do is we'll say like that. Okay, as soon as I say step over, it's going to actually uh, go to line number 15, which means we have already executed line number 13. If you click on grades over here, you can you can see this simply something like a curly brackets. So that's the convention for showing a hash map. So curly brackets, and later on, as soon as, uh, as we add in more entries, it's going to be like a pair using round parentheses. We'll see that. But what I would like to show you is like this. Let's go to iPad over here. What we have done so far is we have created a non-empty, uh, we have created an empty map. So let's see how we can understand it. So what I would do is I'll draw over here. So we have grades, which stores the address of some table over here. And for the table, what we have over here is we have key and we have value, key and value. Okay, at the moment, it's not a single row or a single entry that's been added, so it's simply just uh, just uh, empty, okay? So that is why, uh, and let's uh, remind ourselves again, so the key, that will simply be a string, and for the value, it will simply be a double, okay, just remind yourself, okay? We get, uh, as we add more entries, the, this, this table will be, grow, uh, will be grown, okay, one by one. Let's go back there. And then the first one, we uh, first assertion we're trying to check is assert true grades not equal to null. This is simply true because you can see from here, uh, we do have something to show you uh, at the variable section. That means the object does exist. And also you can see just that it currently is empty. So do distinguish between being empty and also being null. They are different. Being null simply means the object does not exist. Being empty means the map does exist, it just has no entries inside. Okay, it's different. So now, if you say grade's not equal to null, and also you can see since grade points to somewhere, okay, so that means it's not null, it's just empty. So if we're going to, we're going to pass this assertion because grade, grades is not equal to null, so we're going to pass it. So if I say step over, that was going to be fine. And there's one method you can call on uh, hash map, just like how you can call an array list. So grade star size will just tell you how many entries there are in the current map. In this case, we expect to see zero because it's not a single row just yet. Okay, and then what we'll do is, let's check to see. We want, so there are two methods you can call. One is called contains the key and the other one is called contains the value. Contains key simply means we're gonna search through the first column over here to see if there's any key value that we are passing, for example, Allen. In this case, Allen does not exist at the left column, so it's going to return false for this expression over here. We can try, copy this expression here, go to expression here and add new expression, paste, it's going to be false. If we try to add a negation over here, explanation mark is going to not false, will be true. So that means assert true is going to pass, okay? And then we have the second one, similar idea, contains value is going to search through all the values in the right column over here to see if there's any value uh, with 7.5, which correspond to B plus, okay? In this case, also no, because there's no entry whatsoever, just yet, okay? That's why we also put explanation mark to say, grade dot contains value 7.5. If you also copy this expression here and put it here, it will be just false for now, okay? But as soon as we add in the corresponding entry, they say Allen is 7.5, these two expression uh, value will become true. Okay, it really depends which at which point at the runtime you're evaluating the same expression. Okay, so now let's see how we can uh, do some insertion into the uh, map. 
Good, let's just go step over, step over over here. Okay. So this is the most uh, one of the most critical methods for for you to know how to use for map. So we uh, it's called put, and then the first element over here is going to be the key, and you can see that Allen over here is a string value which correspond to the string type for the key, right? And also 8.0, you can see we don't have to say new double and then 8.0, we don't have to. So we can just pass 8.0. It's something called uh, boxing, which means we're going to box 8.0 into a reference double objects and then pass it. Okay, that's something Java will do for you. But for you as a user, you just have to know they actually do some very seamless uh, uh, transition between primitive double into reference type double. Okay, so now 8.0. Okay, so now we are saying that Alan is going to be of uh, getting A for the grade, so just 8.0. Okay, so now as soon as we uh, hit this line, try to execute this line by saying step over, what's going to happen conceptually? Let's see, and then we'll verify that by the debugger. So, so now if we say grades that put, let me put it here, let me use a different color here to illustrate. So now let me put it here, okay, to avoid confusion here, why don't we put it here? Actually, just that, that will be good. Okay, so now the first one, when we say, I'll put it here, grades dot put. And then I say for Alan, I'm going to put a point zero. Okay, because we, here says some principle, which will also illustrate by some example. Whatever you put, if the key value has not existed yet, that means we're adding a new entry. If the key already exists, that means we are trying to override the existing entry by some new value. Okay, we'll illustrate these two cases. But now in this case, because Allen has not does not exist in the current map, so that means it's very easy. We simply just add a new row over here, and then we simply put Allen as the key, and then we put 8.0 as the value, as easy as that. Okay, now, now, so now, if you try to say grade star size is going to be one, okay? Okay, now let's try to verify that. So as soon as you hit it, so say step over, you can see now, uh, if you go back to variables over here, you can see the way uh, Java tried to uh, present that. You simply say Allen will be 8.0. Okay, so they simply say Allen being the key value has the, uh, being the key has the corresponding value 8.0. Okay, so that's basically like this. Okay, but whichever way to understand conceptually is completely up to you. Okay, I'm just trying to show you both ways. And then, so now if I try to say mark uh, 7.5, okay, you shouldn't be too, too surprised. Oh, by the way, if you go back to uh, expressions over here, you can see now grace that can, contains key Allen should now be true because Allen is there. However, if I say grace that contains value 7.5, it will still be false because it's only 8.0, 8 not 7.5. It doesn't exist just yet. Okay. So now what I can do is let's uh, add, add in two more. So now if I say grace that put mark 7.5. So now let's do it quickly. So now what I do is grades dot put mark and then 7.5 so that means i'm going to add a new row over here and then i have mark over here and then 7.5 okay and then the next one would be if i simply say step over you can see that go back to variables you can see the grades is now has two entries so Allen has 8.0 and also mark has 7.5 okay uh, completely consistent with the uh, iPad illustration over here. Okay, let's do one more. And then as soon as I say Tom and then 6.0, okay? What I will do is, let's try maybe, uh, yeah, pink would be fine. So if I say Tom dot, sorry, not Tom dot. If I say grades dot put, and then I say Tom 6.0, I believe, let's double check. Okay, 6.0, and then the consequence of that would be, I will just simply try to add a new row over here. So that'll be Tom, and then 6.0, that's what I have, okay? So after this, uh, so now if you say grace.size, it will simply be three, okay? Hopefully that makes sense to you. 
let's try to do some assertion over here. Okay, the first one. Okay, so now you can see we do have three entry: entry number one, entry number two, entry number three. One thing to note: you can see that the order of the entries, which are between Eclipse and my iPad Air three, is kind of different. You can see I got Tom followed by Alan followed by Mark. So it's not really according to the chronological order of the entries being inserted. On the other hand, the way I do Illustrator, it is. Alan was inserted first, and then Mark, and then Tom. The order of the entries does not matter for the hash map, because the only way you will actually, the critical way of using, uh, the critical way for you to get access to the map, entry will be using a key. So that means the entry uh, order does not matter. Okay, so this view over here, and this view over here are completely the same, okay? Just uh, the order of presenting the entries are different. As long as the key, each key has the right corresponding value, we are fine, okay? So now, uh, let's try to go over a few assertions here. First of all, size. Grace that size should be three, because we've got three rows over here. Alan, Mark, and Tom being the keys. And then let's just do one here. When I say contains key, so we do contain, we uh, in the left column, we do have Alan be one of the keys. Of course, that would be true. And also, now let's see how we can understand this line here. So we have a method called get, okay? Get simply means we want to pass a key value over here. Remember, keys are used for search purposes, which means given any key value, if the key exists, it's going to uniquely identify an entry in the, in the uh, map. In this case, it's going to uniquely identify this particular row that has Alan being the key and then we get the corresponding value, which is 8.0. That is why you can see grace.get. What should be the type for the uh, for the, uh, the get method? The way to understand this is when it's a grace.get, because we know that uh, when we first declare, hash map has the value type being double. So you can think about whenever you say grace.get, it's going to return an object of type, the value that we used to declare, which is double. And then we say this double value, which is 8.0, equals this value here, 8.0. Just make sure they're consistent, okay? So this is to make sure not only that we contains Allen as the key, but the but also the associated value for Allen would be 8.0, okay? It's doing this assertion here. And then you can see we just do the same thing for Mark and Tom, okay? I'm, I'm gonna leave them to you, okay? It's very easy to see. Let me just see, say, uh, put to you one more thing. If I go to expressions over here, what I would do is, I will show you this. I would say grace.get Allen, okay? And then I'll simply put this expression here, and then it's going to give me basically a double object, right? Because we declare the value, value to be double. If I expand it, it's tell me value is simply 8.0, okay? So it's a wrapper object for double class, okay? Okay, let's now go over this assertion and then until I hit, this particular line over here. So now I say grace that contain key contains key Simon. So Simon does not really exist as a key, does it? In that case, so that means Simon does not exist. So that means I will simply put an explanation mark for logical negation. But now if I go to the next one, when I say grace dot get Simon, and Simon is not an existing key. Let's just try that over here. Add a new expression here and put it here it will simply return now. So that means if you try to search for some key which actually does not exist, the corresponding value simply does not exist. So just no, okay? and the logic goes this way, okay? So even uh, when it's a grades.get Simon will be no, when it's a grades.get uh, Jim will also be no because they don't exist in the table just yet, okay? That's something, it's a special case for you to know, okay? So let's do one more thing over here. Remember I talked about two cases for the put. So far, as we put Alan, Mark, and Tom into the table, you can see at the time I put Alan into the map, the map is simply empty. So Alan was not an existing key. At the time I was trying to put this entry over here, Mark was also not an existing key because I only got Alan in the map. At the time I was trying to put Tom into the map, also Tom was not a, an existing key because the map also contain, only contained Alan and Mark, right? So these uh, three insertions to the map simply means I'm trying to add new entries into the map. So now let's try to do call the same method over here, but you can see Mark is an existing key. How do I know? Let's try. Go to expressions over here, you can say grades dot contains key and also here I can say 
mark. Okay, you can see it's simply true. And you can also see from the illustration here, mark it indeed is an existing key. It's the key for some existing entry that's been added. So now when I say grace.put mark and then 5.5, .5, what does that mean? This is how you can understand it. Okay, let me just put it here. Okay, I will put it in a new line. So when I say grades dot put, and now I have mark over here, and then 5.5, .5. okay? So what does that mean here? You can see mark is an existing key. What we will do is we'll, alloc we'll identify which entry it is, which is you, you can uniquely identify a single entry over here, and then we're going to put 5.5 .5 as the new value for this particular entry, which means we're going to overwrite this value here to be 5.5. Uh, .5. That's all we do. So no new entry has been added. We're only modifying the existing entry if the key value is an existing key. Okay. So now let's go back here. So now as soon as we do that over here, what you will see is, first of all, let's go back to variables. If you click on the grace map, you will see at mark has now got 5.5. .5. Before it was 7.5, .5, but it now has been modified to 5.5, .5. okay? And as for Tom and also for Alan, their grades stay the same, okay? So now if you try to see the assertion over here, if I try to see Alan is still in the existing key and his uh, grades is just the same as before, which is 8.0. And also Mark for here, you can, you can see used to be 7.5, but now it has been modified into 5.5 .5 because of this line over here, change that to 5.5. .5. And also for Tall has now been, uh, has now remained the same 6.0, which was also the case before we try to modify Mark, okay? And now Simon still does not exist in the map. So if you try that, it's still not, not an existing key. And also if, if you say grades.get, Simon will still be null. Okay, just the same as before. Okay, so now let's finally, let's have a look at how we can iterate through the hash map. Basically, you can see the way we iterate through, there are two ways to do it. Okay, conceptually. Rate approach number one and approach number two. Approach number one, what I can do is I can just go through the key value one by one. I can go through the key value Alan and then Mark and then Tom. Okay, that's one way to go. And as soon as I get a key value for each iteration, I can ask the map, what's the associated value for this particular key? That's approach number one. Approach number two, we can go through the entry one by one, the entire entry. So approach number two, the first iteration, I can get access to this entry over here. For iteration number two, I can get access to this entry over here. And for the final iteration, I can get access to this iteration. So entry by entry, either key by key or entry by entry, okay? Let's see exactly how this can work and see which one you prefer, okay? Both way works, okay? So now the first way, so let's say I want to calculate the total grade points, okay? For example, you can see, I want to say somehow the first entry has grade point 8.0, the second one has grade point 5.5, .5, and the third entry got grade point 6.0. I would like to add them up together and get a total grade point being 19.5. 19 how do I do that? Okay, so very similar to how we did it for the array list, but let me, for completeness, I will also try to illustrate to you, okay? What I will do is I will try to go for a new page over here, and then let's illustrate that. Okay, again, let's review what we have. Okay, uh, apparently this is the diagram we had. Okay, I'm just have a new page for you. So this is how we declare. Let's talk about declaration. So we have hash map, and then the key type is simply a string, and the value type being the grade point is of type double. And then we say the grades is assigned to some new object over here, okay? So now again, this is the key and this is the value, okay? Now let's see the first uh, first way of uh, iterating through, okay? Let's see the first way. Okay, I'll simply write it down, okay? Approach number one. Approach number one, we're going to go over key by key. Key by so we have the for each lap uh, for each uh, loop over here so we don't really use a conventional loop where you got a loop counter it doesn't work 
because the order of the entries does not matter in a map. So we cannot simply just go over like by indices zero to you know slice minus one. It doesn't work that way for map. So now we say four. So now let me just write it down for you. Okay. So we're gonna need to have a colon over here. Okay. And then we're going to have the map name, which is grades. Okay, let me just, uh, I need a little bit more. Okay, there's a method you should know. Uh, grades dot key set. Okay, simply call this. So apparently if you just see the literal meaning for that, it's going to return a set. In the case of grades over here, it's going to return a set with Alan mark and tom okay let's just uh let me put it as an annotation for you the key set over here is going to be a set with alan mark and tom so these are the three keys over here that's what the keys i will return to you if you have uh a map with a hundred entries it's going to return a hundred keys right and then what should be what should we put on the left hand side over here let's see how exactly we can do that so now what's the type for the key well it's exactly declare over here so that means we can declare the key for each iteration to be uh i can say maybe name any name you like for this particular variable key it can be called name or it can be called string s or it can be called maybe students that's also fine. As long as the variable name does not clash with any existing variable in the same scope, then we are fine. Okay, again, it's really crucial. There are two things over here. One is the string type over here corresponds to the key type over here. And the second thing is over here, the key set method you have to know how to call. Okay, so these are the two critical points. Okay, that means for the first iteration, and uh, let me just say for each iteration, you can actually use the students. You know, the student is going to be uh, assigned to some key value from the key set, right? The first iteration may be Alan, and then second iteration Mark, and the third iteration Tom. If you just want to print out the keys, the key value will be sufficient. If you also want to get the corresponding value for this particular key, what you can do is you can just say grades dot remember we have the get method right and then just pass the value for the students so this is how you get a key and this is how you get a value for each iteration right so that's one way to iterate through the map so that's exactly you would, what you would see in the uh, code over here so we declare each key being of type uh, being of type string which correspond to our declaration of the key for the hash map over here in the very beginning and then we say that uh the key comes from the key set and by the way over here for the colon for those of you who actually learned about discrete math the colon over here correspond to the symbol membership you can think about key set over here is returning a set and we're saying for each iteration the student is just going to be a member of this set over here okay conceptually that's what that means okay and then we're gonna say, uh, for each one we're gonna say grades.get the name for the very first one, let's just try to see, uh, just write a random, okay? Let me put the breakpoint over here so we can go directly to here, and then we'll say uh, step return. So that way here, let's go through the three iterations, okay? If you move your mouse over the grades, it also shows you uh, the uh, the map entries over here. You can also explore them. So now we got Tom, we got Alan, we got Mark. Again, as I said before, the entries order does not matter. In the case of Eclipse, it's going to go through Tom, followed by Alan, followed by Mark. In my case over here, we're going to go over Alan, followed by Mark, followed by Tom. The same thing. Uh, the aggregate value for the total points will be just the same. Okay, so now if I say step over over here, Okay, so now let's see uh, the variable. You can see the name is now Tom, the very first entry, Tom. And then uh, let's just go over here. Okay, go to expressions over here. I can add a new expression here. I can say, what's the name, Tom? And then I can see grades.get name. That would be some double object, which is 6.0. 6 and then 
total grade points at the moment is simply zero. Haven't, we haven't executed line 51 for the first iteration yet. But as soon as we do that, you can see total grade points has now been changed to over here, 6.0, okay, it's been added. And now let's say step over to go to the second iteration. You can now see back to the expressions over here, Nay has now become Allen. Used to be Tom is now Allen. And then the corresponding uh, grades that get name, which will be the corresponding value grade points for Allen, which is 8.0. So now in a moment, you can see uh, total grade point is 6.0. As soon as we execute this line, it's going to be added the value for Allen's grade points, which is 8.0. Let's try that. As soon as I say step over again, so now it's going to be uh, 14.0, right? It's being added. Okay, now let's now go to the last iteration. I think we got mark left. So now go to the third iteration, you can see it's mark over here, and then see the expressions over here. The corresponding value grades.get mark will be 5.5, okay? So now as soon as we execute this line, you can see back to variables, the total grade points has been changed to 19.5. Okay, that's how it works. So the approach number one is very straightforward. You simply have to know how to call grades a key set. Okay, it's a method for you to use. And then you should know how to declare the type for the key value for each iteration. In this case, simply go back to how you declare the mesh hash map, at, uh, how, how you declare that to be. In this case, the key value should be of type string. That's why I put string over here. Okay, and it goes through one by one. Okay, so now if I step over again, so now I'm exit from the loop because I finished all the uh, iteration for all the three entries, Alan, Mark, and Tom. Okay, let's go back here. And then this assertion is going to pass. And when I say assert equals, it's a good practice to say sometimes for double value, it may not be 100% precise uh, for, uh, for the computer to calculate. So I would just give some tolerance to say the actual return value from your code can be plus or minus 0 0.01 as tolerance. Okay? It's just a common practice for you to do assert equals on double values. Okay? Especially for complicated calculations, your, your value may not be exactly the same as what's expected. So we can uh, have some tolerance, 0 .0, uh, 0 0.01. It's a uh, reasonable approximation for the actual value expected. Okay, let's go to see the uh, second one over here, approach number two. Okay, again, let me just go to uh, do that over here. It's gonna be very, very similar. Okay, let's just, for completeness, let's do it. Let me use a different color here. So approach number two. Number two, okay, it's going to be entry by entry. Entry by entry. Okay, let's write out the code, which is a very similar structure. Okay, again, I will say four over here. Okay, and then I need to say some variable over here, and I need to say some type over here, right? And then I have my call in here. You know, let me leave a little bit more space because I, in this case, I need a little bit more space. There's gonna be some type over here. There's gonna be some name of variable over here. And then I have the call in corresponding to membership. And then over here, I say grades dot. So now rather than key set, it's going to be another method called entry set. Again, you should just know how to call this method and the rest will be very easy. Okay, so now let's try to understand this. The entry set over here is the new method you should know how to call. Entry set. Let's think about what entry set really is, okay? It's going to be a set and where each member in the set is going to be an entry, okay? Each entry is simply a single row in your table over here. So now in our case, let's just put it down, okay? So now what I will do is I'll write down what a set should be. So entry set over here. So now the first entry will just be uh, Allen 8.0. Uh, I'll just say Allen equals 8.0. Okay, I'll just follow the Eclipse notation. And then the second entry will be Mark 5.5. 5.5. .5. And the third entry will be Tom 6.0. So I put Tom here, equals 6.0. So that's the entry. So this is the first entry, second entry, and third entry. First entry has the key and the value, key and the value, and key and the value. Okay, each entry has the key and the value, as opposed to just the key in the first approach. 
Okay. Now, how do we declare the type for each entry? Okay. So now, first of all, let's declare the name of the variable. That's much easier. Okay. So what I would do is I will go back here. Let me use uh, here. And then what I would do is I can do for, uh, you can call the entry or you can call, uh, let me see how I call that in the Eclipse. I just call them entry. Okay. Let me just call it entry then. Okay. You can call it anything. You can call it E or entry. Let me call it E, which means you don't have to be uh, constrained by the name you can put for the variable. Let me put it, put it E. So now, how do we declare the type over here? So now there's another class you should know how to use. Okay, as you, uh, if you see from Eclipse over here, there's one class that we uh, import, which is Java utility package map dot entry. So this is this entry class we have to use if you want to use a second approach to iterate through the uh, hash map. So over here, what I will I'll write it down for you, and then I will explain to you how you can understand it. So what I would do is I would say entry class because I already imported it. Entry and entry is also part of the Java collection, which is also generic. And if that's generic for you to use it, you just have to use angle brackets. Starting with angle brackets, ending with angle brackets over here. And now each entry is going to contain the key and the value. So now what should be the type for the key? Well, you can look it up. It's going to be going to be string. So I'll put string over here. And then what's going to be the type of value? Well, it's going to be double. So I'll put double over here. So that's how you put up the de uh, put down the decoration. Okay, again, let's let me summarize. So now the new type for you to know is called entry. Okay? As opposed to the key type string in the first approach. Okay, entry. And then how do I know the type for the entry? So now I should really look at, for example, over here, the key type is string. So that's why I put string over here. And the value type is double. So that's why I put double over here. Okay. So now I declare entry and then put a key type and put a value type. And then I put a variable name for the entry for each iteration. So the fir for the very first iteration, E will be referring to the first entry. For the second iteration, E will be referring to uh, the second entry. And for the th uh, third iteration, E will be referring to the third entry. Okay, again, the order of iterating through the entries is, does not matter. For Eclipse, it's going to be slightly different from what I show over here conceptually. But overall, since we only want to calculate the accumulated grade points, so the value would just be the same, the result. Okay, and of course, inside over here, what I can do is uh, inside the loop, I can say E is of type entry. Okay, so now what I can do is I can either say entry. Okay, let me just see what I, what I use over there, so I can also show you. You can either say get value or get key. Since we want to calculate what's the grade points uh, total, so we only need a value. But over here, you can either say e dot get key. In which is in which case for the first iteration is going to be Alan. Second iteration will be Mark. Third iteration is going to be Mark. Okay. I can also say another one, I can say e dot get value. And now in this case, the first iteration is going to be 8.0, second iteration is going to be 5.5, third iteration is going to be 6.0. Let's verify that. Okay. So now, of course, for the first iteration, the key value over here and the value value over here must be consistent, right? So when I return whatever this is, it must be the key for this corresponding value. That's what I meant. Okay, let's see that for the debugger. Let me go back here. And for the very first iteration, okay, let me just, uh, again, put a breakpoint over here. And then I would say step return. Okay, let's see the first iteration. Step over. And then what I will see is uh, entry over here, the first entry, in which, in which case it would be just be tall. Okay, the entry itself is Tom 6.0. If you expand the object structure, it shows you the key is a string, Tom, value is a double, and then it's 6.0. Okay, let's also see from the expressions over here. We want to see how the E is going to change. So first of all, I can see E over here. Okay, not, uh, sorry, not E, entry. Okay, E is only for the iPad, so I'll put entry. Okay, entry over here, as we see over here, key and the value. Okay, let's just open that uh, to be handy. And then I'll say entry dot get key and which is tall entry dot get value. In this case is a double, which is uh, 6.0. 
okay so now let's focus on one two and three these three expressions and see how they change as we go through to the second iteration for the first iteration is simply tom and 6.0 which is consistent with what we said over here tom uh let me see here so the first iteration is going to be tom and 6.0 the first iteration okay so now let's go to second iteration step over and then now over here you can see that over here the entry has now been allen with the value uh 8.0 and then entry that get key will be allen and entry that get value will be 8.0 that's exactly the second iteration over here so this is the second iteration okay second iteration and then one thing to note you can see now before we try to execute line number 58 in the second iteration the total grade points is only 6.0 only added from the tom's grade points we haven't added alan's grade point just yet so as soon as we execute over it's going to be 4.0 uh, 14.0 adding uh, by adding uh, alan's 8.0 okay so now when we go to the last iteration over here if you go there expressions we can uh, easily predict that it's going to be about mark you can see for the entry over here for the for the variable for the loop key here is mark and the value here will be uh 5.5 okay and then for the entry that get key would be mark and val entry that get value will be 5.5 okay so that's exactly the last iteration over here that we are talking about so got third three iterations to go through all the three entries entry by entry for the second approach okay and if you execute this line we'll see that now total grade points will be just as before 19.5 you can see these two values agree Okay, they are completely equivalent, just different ways of iterating through. Which one should you use? As you can see very easily, approach number one, you can only get key by key, right? If you only need a key value, that's fine. But if you want to get a corresponding value, you must call the get method in order to get a corresponding value. On the other hand, if you're using the second approach, since you're going through entry by entry, in this case, in order to get a key, you can say entry that get key. You don't have to say grace dot uh, key set, right? And if you want to say entry dot get, uh, you want to get a value, you say entry dot get value. You don't have to say grace dot get and then a key value. You don't have to say that. Okay. So these are the two uh, different approaches for you to see. Uh, which one to use? Depending on what you need. But now you learn both. Okay. Let me just stop this and let me finally just to run the JUnit test to make sure everything just passed. Okay, you can see a green bar over here and make sure you switch. So currently we are in the debugger perspective, switch back to Java, just click on Java over here. So now we're back in here. Okay, so that's about some basic usages for the uh, hash map. So go over that and make sure you understand that conceptually, hopefully you can easily adapt the two approaches for iterating through the hash map in your application.